Welcome back guys, with the plot of Cyberpunk 2077 being largely unknown, I thought we would talk about what's happened in the world of Night City prior to 2077. I think it's safe to assume the story will not be an exact continuation from Cyberpunk 2020, where the Cyberpunk narrative was first fully developed. This is because CD Projekt Red has stated that they've juggled the timeline of prior events to fit with their vision of 2077's current events. This doesn't mean, however, that large portions of the story won't be similar or even a continuation of Night City's dark and loaded history. Today we lay a foundation of understanding on what's happened in the world of Cyberpunk and Night City that's led up to present times. Cyberpunk 2020 takes place in the year 2020 in Night City, an area of 5 million people on the west coast of the United States, somewhere between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Following an event called The Collapse, in which there was a socio-economic depression, the United States government has begun to heavily rely on megacorporations to keep the nation afloat. As you can imagine, with all the power lying on the shoulders of the megacorporations, this gives them an overruling authority of Night City. There are a bunch of megacorporations in this time, but the notable ones are Militech and Arasaka, who've been butting heads since their inceptions. Militech is an arms company, whilst Arasaka provides corporate security and police to other corporations and governmental bodies. Now Cyberpunk 2020's main plotline is told in three separate parts called the Firestorm Trilogy, although the last part never actually came out. This leaves us with lingering questions that CDPR can address in 2077 should it choose to follow this path. In late 2021, two major rivaling Aquatech companies are back and forth over a third corporation. Each side brings in another mega corporation as the situation escalates, with Militech being in one corner and Arasaka being in the other corner. Each company is trying to acquire stock in a related third corporation, and thus the Ocean War is started. During the Ocean War, a variety of things happen. First, combat netrunners were recruited by each of the corporations to make runs on stock holdings and muscle their way into acquiring them for their respective companies through the net. Netwatch, who are essentially the net police and work for the net, warned both Arasaka and Militech to stop their net activities with a 12-hour communications embargo. Militech recruits grizzled solo hero and world-class mercenary Morgan Blackhand to oversee security operations during this time to bolster their intelligence. With war brewing, banks start to step in, namely Eurobank, to increase their profits by offering both Militech and Arasaka loans to help in their fight against each other. Both Militech and Arasaka refuse, and Eurobank tries to manipulate them into an agreement. Megacorps may have dodgy morals, but banks are no different. There is a settlement after turmoil dies down and a peace accord is signed between Militech and Arasaka, oddly enough with the help of Eurobank. Now the Ocean War had devolved into Militech and Arasaka, taking the spotlight from the Aquatech corporations that hired them. Whilst these Aquatech corps fell back into a calmer state, Militech and Arasaka were plotting their next move and by early 2022, a violent shadow war had begun with Militech and Arasaka trying to covertly hit each other in the pocketbooks as well as on the front line with hired mercenaries, cyber assassins, and netrunners. Now during the shadow war, Arasaka was deep in developing the Soul Killer, a weaponized computer program that would trap the consciousness of a netrunner on the net forever, forcing their minds to float endlessly in cyberspace. They can also use this program to unravel Militech secrets and breach into their installations, projects, and plans. With Militech desperate to protect themselves from this devastating program, they reach out to Roche Bartmoss, the best netrunner in the world for help. He refuses their offer, so Militech contact Alt Cunningham, who created the beta version of the Soul Killer and now wants to see its destruction. Alt agrees to get back at Arasaka, who has wronged her in the past, and she convinces Bartmoss to join in the campaign. Bartmoss hits hard and manages to hack himself into Arasaka killer satellites to destroy Arasaka's space factories. Arasaka then proceeds to put out a huge bounty on Roche Bartmoss. Bartmoss, however, is deceptive and cunning and ends up locating the Soul Killer Master program and although killed in the process, deploys an unknown program into the Soul Killer. Alt, who is also involved in the mission, is absorbed by the Soul Killer. Now this tit-for-tat online covert style jabs at each other proved to be just the beginning of the conflict between Militech and Arasaka, and in June 2022, the battle took to the streets as physical violence and warfare broke out in what was called the Hot War. Several cities such as Hong Kong and Rio de Janeiro were reduced to rubble. Bart Moss returned to the net, most likely due to him deploying his consciousness into the Soul Killer and surviving somehow. He proceeds to hit both Arasaka and Militech data forts. 
Orbital colonies are almost destroyed including the Crystal Palace and Militech aligns itself with the government during this time. Arasaka ends up losing the war and is thus subject to the scrutiny and control of Militech and US troops. Despite Arasaka losing, the threat of the Soul Killer rearing its head again remains. Now with this being a role playing game intertwined into the story, this is where the final mission begins. The major NPCs including Johnny Silverhand, Spider Murphy and other proficient characters in the world are assigned to a strike team whose objective is to gain entrance to the Arasaka Tower and get to the 120th level to destroy an updated version of the Soul Killer. They must also rescue Alt Cunningham who has been consumed by the Soul Killer and floats in eSpace as a digital consciousness. You as a player play in Strike Team Beta sent in to place a nuke to destroy the Soul Killer post rescue mission. Strike Team Alpha's role is copying the Soul Killer and extracting Arasaka's secrets using a portable storage device. They make it to the 120th floor but realize Yorinobu Arasaka's mind has been copied onto the Soul Killer. With only enough storage to extract information or Yorinobu's mind, they have a decision to make. Extract the rogue son of the Arasaka lineage who could give them vital information to use against Arasaka or the program itself. Meanwhile, your team also on the 120th floor is under pressure from Kai Arasaka, a devoted Arasaka higher up. Alpha team is successful and downloads Alt Cunningham to a storage unit but are ambushed by Arasaka cyborg assassin Adam Smasher who's leading Arasaka forces. Beta team launches the nuke at this time and reduces the building and buildings around to nothingness with the effects rippling past adjacent streets, mega buildings and blockades. Kai Arasaka escapes but is caught later by the surviving members of Alpha Team. They force Kai to commit seppuku at gunpoint by plugging into a drive containing the last copy of the Soul Killer. His consciousness goes to a prison set up by Premier Netrunner Bart Moss for Kai's father Saburo Arasaka. Alpha Team then destroys the last copy of the Soul Killer and a major weapon in Arasaka's arsenal and that's where the universe stands before 2077. There are tons of lingering questions and cliffhangers and this may be the path 2077 takes heading forwards. That's it for me guys, I hope this gave you some inside knowledge into some of Night City's history that you can have at your disposal to better understand the world of Cyberpunk 2077.